She's able to breathe on her own. These women turned to Aronowitz when medical mishaps left them at their wits' end. I don't even know the words. It was it was terrible. This young woman, Pamela Rudoy, was born well endowed. A breast surgery left her with droopy looking breasts. So first she booked a surgery with another doctor to fix them. But she was crushed when she looked in the mirror. It left uh, my nipples um, really, really high and everything else like like my breasts were down here. It was bad. She got a second opinion from Dr. Aronowitz. The other doctor was like, there's nothing that can be done and Dr. Aronowitz fixed me in a second. Everything that this other doctor said, no, I can't do, he did, plus more. So now the procedure is complete, and within six to eight weeks, the growth of the tissue that we added should be apparent. And I'm here with Darla and her plastic surgeon, Dr. Joel Aronowitz. How are you? Welcome back, Joel. Thank you. Good to Thank see you. you. So. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Um, I'm so pleased with the way this is healed. On the next Dr. Oz, Suzanne Summers' cancer battle. I went to war. She rejected conventional treatment. I said to the doctor first off, I said, I can't do that. One said, if you're not going to take chemotherapy, then I can't work with you. So you went to another country to bring this back here. Is this the future of medicine? This is living tissue. The stem cells reactivate the healing. The physician who performs Suzanne's surgeries with us, Dr. Joel Aronowitz, uh, very well known in this area. Uh, Suzanne, you went to another country yes. to bring this back here. I did. I, I got in touch with the Dr. Kotaro Yoshimura of Japan, of the University of Tokyo, who has done this over there on Japanese women um, at that time, 400 times. Now he's done it over 500 times. So Dr. Aronowitz, why do you believe this is a better option, potentially for women? Then the more conventional options that Suzanne turned down, that there's implants, the other various plastic procedures that are conventionally done. Clearly no operation is for everybody, but this is a new alternative that is going to be um, available to a lot of women because um, you don't have to have scars elsewhere on your body. The liposuction is with little, tiny, insignificant scars. The injection process is with a little, tiny, insignificant scar. There's no healing from that. And it's me. It's all, you know, when I, it's not like there's no, it's me. That's, that, and no scars. All, it's just so fantastic. There's, there's no implant. Join us now to talk about the effective treatment plans, including a groundbreaking procedure using stem cells, is Dr. Joel uh, Aronowitz. Thank you so much for being with us from the Breast Preservation Foundation. Uh, my mom has had uh, breast cancer, had the mastectomy, and you're telling us about a, a type of mastectomy that um, salvages more of the woman's body, I guess is a way to put it. Part of the good news about breast cancer that we can talk about is since we're diagnosing breast cancer a lot earlier now, at earlier stages, we can do less disfiguring breast surgery. And women just have to know to ask for it. We have. Tell me your story. How did it happen? How did you find out about him? Well, I happened to just turn on the TV um, to the Dr. Oz show, uh -huh. and you were on with Dr. Aronowitz. And I said, I have to remember his name. And it was about a month later that I found out that I had breast cancer. And Oh, my. So you went in. Did they do surgery for your breast cancer? All at the same time. All at the same. Yes. That is what you had been talking about because Dr. Arana was had uh, said to me after we did mine. I was the first one to legally do this in the country, and and he said down the road what we're going to be able to do is when a woman goes in for 
breast cancer is uh, do the fill right at the same time. Exactly, and it was a breeze. It was um, when my family saw me, they were shocked that I looked so good, I felt so good, and you know, a day after, I was putting on my makeup, I went to the grocery store. I exercise every day, eat healthy, and um, do a little plastic surgery. Eileen Horowitz has no guilt about a little nip and tuck. I've worked, was a school teacher, I raised two kids, so it's my time. <laughs> it's my time now to have a little fun with my life. So Eileen is having her neck, her cheeks, and her brow lifted. And it's nothing major, it's just a little skin. Dr. Joel Aronowitz, Chief of Plastic Surgery at Cedars-Sinai, will administer just a local anesthetic to numb her. This is the worst, the little shots. So, uh, you want to hear a joke? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Eileen is not even given a sedative. She will be awake and coherent throughout the entire surgery. It's fun because you have control and you're a part of it. And here's Eileen exactly one week later. No apparent swelling or bruising. But she was a little surprised when we showed her video from her surgery. That skin? Oh. Dr. Joel Lorenowitz has been a respected and successful plastic surgeon for over 30 years, but his progressive work these days with reconstructive breast surgery that's earned him national recognition and makes him the go-to guy for breast cancer survivors started out with much humbler beginnings and a woman named Diane. She sat in my office in tears and we talked about this because even though she wasn't a doctor, she realized that the surgery she had had was way too disfiguring way unnecessarily disfiguring for the, the cancer that she had. It's important that women realize that it is perfectly acceptable to be concerned about the cosmetic appearance, about having a natural appearance of their breast, despite dealing with breast cancer or the threat of breast cancer. Right. Just because breast cancer hangs over our heads doesn't mean you can't still have a natural appearance of the breast, and that concern should be expressed to your doctor. We asked Dr. Joel Aronowitz of the University Stem Cell Center in Santa Monica, California, about the most popular plastic surgery procedures that men are requesting. Well, men are coming in for plastic surgery nowadays like they haven't before, and many times for men it's because in their career their appearance is holding them back because they have a more tired appearance or more aged appearance. So it usually focuses on one specific issue for men. So anyway, if, if women desire to have this procedure, who do they talk to? Him. Well, you, you get a lot of phone calls. You're going to be busy. Well, I, do, I, I agree with Dr. Rubin. There are several centers around the country that can contact the Breast Preservation Foundation uh, which is our nonprofit that promotes skin and nipple sparing mastectomy and this type of technology. And we can direct those, those patients to somewhere locally. I do totally agree with Dr. Rubin that this kind of thing should be done under the aegis of clinically approved trial so that we all learn from it and benefit and the patient is protected from being taken advantage of by people just using the word stem cells. Yeah. So kudos to both of you for doing this research. Congratulations on the research results. Tell us about the yeah. Breast Preservation Foundation. The Breast Preservation Foundation was formed by myself out of frustration of dealing with women like this who after the fact come for reconstruction and then there's a limited amount plastic surgeon can do. So we formed this foundation in order to promote this operation, which has been shown to be equally as safe as a traditional mastectomy. It is equally safe to have it done this way as have a traditional mastectomy. And it's their, their right, and they need to know that. Dr. Joel Aronowitz is an expert on botched plastic surgeries. He's a fixer, a board-certified plastic surgeon who specializes in reconstructive operations. As a doctor, as a plastic surgeon, I think, what was the plastic surgeon thinking? Yeah, a significant part of my practice is dealing with plastic surgery complications, what I call plastic surgery misadventures the wrong operation on the wrong patient for the wrong indication. I went into medicine because I thought it was a good idea to try to help people and that's my basic motivation. 